But let's get straight then to CNBC TV Gen exclusive. Now, sources tell us here that uh, Pyramid Enterprises, they are eyeing DHFL's assets and they may pick up a stake as well. Abhishek joins us uh, to run us through all those details. Abhishek? Well, Nigel, uh, Piramal Enterprise may consider a strategic investment in DHFL or Diwan Housing Finance. Now, this strategic investment means they might buy equity as well as assets or the books uh, of DHFL. So, they could pick up some equity in DHFL as well as Piramal Enterprise could buy some retail portfolio of DHFL, which would provide, uh, you know, liquidity to the company. So, uh, uh, stake buy and asset purchase may require a significant sum. Now, the sum that I'm hearing is that out of the 100% sum that they intend to invest, about 85% odd uh, would be for the retail portfolio buyout, while the 10 to 15% kind of a sum would be used to buy out uh, the equity. Piramal, as you have always seen, wherever they have invested, they have been more uh, interested in taking a board seat. So, uh, Piramal may consider some uh, sale of its investment to fund this deal or, you know, look out for a uh, partner as well to fund fund this deal if at all they are not able to uh, generate sufficient funds. Uh, due diligence on DHFL uh, is likely to have been completed. We wrote to Piramal Enterprise. They had mentioned to us that they would not like to comment on market speculation. While we wrote to DHFL as well, they, uh, they have not yet responded to our story. Back to you. Right, Abhishek, thanks a lot for that. That is DHFL up around 9%. Remember, sometime last month, the management of DLF had said that they, uh, DHFL rather, had said that they are looking at uh, a strategic partner coming in. So this is something that we'll keep an eye out on, though uh, we are awaiting commentary coming in from DHFL. With that, we move on to a corporate voice. We have Rahul Puri of Mukta Arts joining us on the phone line. Remember, that stock was buzzing with huge volumes in yesterday's trading session. And if you pull up a one-month chart, uh, you would have seen that Mukta Arts itself has gained about 30% in just the last one month. Some profit taking seen today in the last one month up around 26%. Rahul Puri joins us now. Rahul, thanks a lot for joining in. First up, you know, before we st uh, talk about your business as a whole, there has been commentary coming in from Ronnie Skruwala who says, or who accuses the multiplex industry of collusion with regards to the VPF or virtual print fees, uh, which is charged by uh, multiplexes. So a couple of questions. How much does VPF account for in your total revenue? And uh, what would you say uh, to these uh, acquisitions that are coming in from Ronnie Skruwala? We don't uh, collect VPF um, in Mukta A2 cinemas. We don't collect uh, that. That's something that's collected by UFO on our behalf. Um, so it's not something that uh, factors into uh, at least our business uh, model. Um, but with regards to what Ronnie says, um, I mean, Ronnie is uh, not wrong in, in uh, some of the acquisitions uh, that he's making, uh, particularly with, with regards to um, the fact that the uh, international studios uh, don't pay uh, BPF on, on, uh, on foreign movies. Um, however, what we need to understand here is, is that um, somebody is going to have to pay um, for the virtual print, uh, for the print cost. Um, somebody's going to have to invest that money. Um, now, whether it goes straight to the exhibitor uh, or it goes to uh, UFO, who um, is uh, a virtual uh, exhibitor, or um, it simply reduced from uh, yeah. the share that the exhibitor shares with the distributor mm. and the producer, somewhere along the line, that has to be accounted for. So, um, it's, uh, you know, I think Ronnie's um, uh, highlighting uh, the VPF, but I think... Um, if you read uh, his petition, um, he's basically talking a lot more about, um, you know, the big four um, uh, multiplexes and how they operate. Um, mm. And honestly speaking, uh, I can see, um, uh, you know, he has some point of view on that. But I can also mm. see that some of them, in, in my uh, opinion, um, are mainly sort of business-oriented decisions. I, I don't really see how... Uh, the Competition Commission comes into those areas. Okay, all right. Uh, thanks so much for joining in, Raul, and thanks for giving us your comment as well on this particular issue. So let's move on. Let's talk about business then. I remember the start of the year, you were talking about adding 15 to 20 screens. Have you managed to do that? What's the total screen count uh, as we speak at the end of FY19 and if we could compare it with the start of the year? So I think we have managed to add um, a number of screens uh, over the last uh, year or so. I think we've got up to now um, 60 screens uh, across the country. Um, 
uh, I think we started the year um, uh, around 50. So, you know, we've we've uh, added slowly uh, and surely. Um, uh, I think that, you know, now we've focused on, um, you know, a lot of renovation. Last uh, quarter, particularly, um, we spent um, uh, All right. a great deal of our capex mm -hmm. on renovating um, our cinema. Rahul, as per um, your latest press release to the Bombay Stock Exchange, uh, you have 64 screens. And if you say you started out with about 50 screens, so that's about 14 screens added yeah. this year. Uh, next year, what would you add? Because I remember you said total screens would be around 80 by end FY19. That's not the case to be. By FY20, what is the number of screens you're looking at? I think we should get up to about 80, 85 screens by the end of uh, the, the next financial year. All right. And how much money will you be spending on that? And where will you get that money from? Because, you know, Rahul, I'm looking at your uh, theatrical division business. All the other companies, uh, be it PVR, Inox, are doing much better margins than you. So when do you start to, uh, you know, operationally gain from the expansion that you're undergoing? I think that the answer is, is that we've already started in a small way to gain from it. Um, you know, we've uh, recently increased our uh, our percentage uh, of revenue that we get from advertising, which uh, is the key sort of metric that we're losing out to uh, with with regards to uh, comparison to PBR and Inox. And I think that as we add more and more scale, you'll see that that. Um, that revenue will go up. And as we all know, advertising revenue is essentially, um, you know, 100% um, margin is 100% bottom line. So uh, our margins will improve greatly as, as we add uh, screens. And our current uh, advertising um, deal is basically on a per, per screen um, mm -hmm. basis. It's a per, per admissions basis. So um, the more screens we add uh, over a period of time, um, the better our margins will become. All right, uh, Raul, before we let you go, the smaller part of your business, that's in terms of revenues, that's the education business. Now, that's been growing pretty well as well at nearly around 20% if I look at it for the first nine months. Uh, what's, what's the kind of revenue visibility you have on that for FY20? If you could give us a sense in terms of numbers of enrollments, how much are you charging uh, per student? I, I think that, um, you know, we'll continue to grow uh, quite strongly in terms of enrollments. Um, up to FY20, we currently have about 1,100 students on campus. I would expect that by FY20, that number will be uh, maybe 1,250. Um, you know, our, our, our admission fees um, or, or the fees that we charge are different um, sort of on the, the different courses that we offer. Um, but I'd say um, on an average basis, you're looking at about 5.5 lakhs uh, a student um, a, a year. Um, and that would put us, uh, I think, um, up above uh, 50, 55 crores in terms of revenue. So, all right. Fair point there, Rahul. Thanks a lot for that. Wish you good luck for your expansion plans as well as the next uh, educational year as well. With that, we slip into a short break, come back and we get chatting with another management. We have Mass Tech on our radar. We'll get chatting with Abhishek Singh, the group CFO.